Hey, this is uh, Mr. Collins. I'm getting you through the second video in a series on this uh, exponential growth and decay delta math. And in this video, I'm going to focus on the third section of that delta math about half life and doubling time. And you're going to see um, that the problems here are all similar, even though uh, some of them talk about an amount doubling over a fixed period of time and uh, sometimes the amount of uh, substance is halved or, or it gets divided by two uh, over a fixed period of time. It's really the same type problem. Um, so I guess we'll look at the doubling one first and I, I stole an example here from Delta Math. It's about somebody who invests in an account that doubles every seven years, which again is great if you can get it. Um, and we wanna know how much money will be in the account after three years. So we need a basic formula for doubling. I'm gonna write it here. Hey, do you have to memorize it? I guess not, since you have open internet and open notes in this uh, distance learning time. But I'll write it here for you anyway. A is an initial amount. If you're doubling, the base is two, um, and the exponent is T over D, where D is your doubling time. So just write that here. And again, this is, uh, this is a problem when, uh, this is your um, formula when something doubles over a fixed period of time. But you could see if something tripled your base would be three or quadrupled it would be four. There's nothing really special about two. Um, and all we gotta do is just fill in uh, the value here, right? They want three years. They wanna know after three years ticks off the clock. So that's T equals three. Why don't we write that here? Uh, the initial amount, that's your 690. There it is. Um, and every seven years, uh, that's your doubling time. It doubles. I guess that's kind of the most important thing. Doubles every seven years. So your doubling time is seven. And this is the easy part. It's time to just plug in what we know, right? So we want a function when t equals three. Uh, what are we starting at? We're starting an initial amount of $690. And we double. And we want to know, <clears throat> excuse me, how much after three years if we normally double in seven years, right? And guess what? Your calculator could eat that up. Uh, just make sure that this remains the uh, exponent. Actually, I don't really want to circle it, but make sure that remains as the exponent. And of course, the operation on your calculator to get an exponent is that up caret key. Make sure to use that. So if I plug this in, uh, to the nearest dollar, this is going to shake out to be about $929. Okay, so not really difficult to do doubling. It's just a matter of plugging in. Let's look about uh, when you have something, or in particular, a half-life problem. Uh, now, these come up in science class a lot, particularly in chemistry. A lot of elements have half-lives. We can predict how long it takes for a certain element to decay. Um, and this is a typical example of that. An element, uh, every 86 years, its mass decreases by one half. That's called its half-life. And suppose we started with 730 grams. Well, that's my initial amount. That's what I'm calling uh, A, right? The half-life, or what, I'm calling, I guess in my next equation, instead of doubling time, I'll call that my halving time, is 86. And I wanna know, hey, what's gonna happen at the end of uh, nine years? That's my, my time unit. That's actually my variable here. Um, I guess we need a half-life formula. And here's the one I'm gonna use here. It's F of T is A, my initial amount, and then my base is a half, right? We talk about half life, but if it was a third life, it would be a third, right? And the exponent is T over H, where H is what? It's your half life, right? It's your, I guess you'd call it, it's your, uh, yeah, we'll call it your half life, or how long it takes for half of the element to uh, decay. And I just want to warn you, in science class, you might get a formula slightly different. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be the same idea right? 
I think uh, you might see something as simple as a times one half uh, to the t or something like that. But um, irregardless, right? It's all it's all very similar. They just use different letters. Hey, let's plug in. Let's try to get the answer here. So what do we want? We want to know what's going to happen after nine years. So that's my t, right? I start at 730 grams of whatever this isotope is. I keep having it and I wanna know how much after nine years, but remember it takes 86 years to actually have it. So I'm kind of 986 of the way to losing half of my element. That's kind of why it looks so goofy. And again, I'm gonna put that into my uh, graphing calculator. And this shakes out to be about 679 grams. So it didn't lose that much, why? Because it takes 86 years to lose half of it, only nine years have ticked off the clock. That's why you only went from 730 to 679. Again, all these, uh, these problems are very similar, right? You're gonna see some starting number, you're gonna have a base, and then you're gonna have some power up here. That's kind of every, growth and decay problem looks something like that. And of course we use different letters depending on the, uh, the type of problem you have. Well, I, uh, I hope that helps you and I wish you good luck in completing your Delta math assignment.